You are listening to the Global Psychosis Network. That means that you've done dirt for your crew when you wear them. You wear black out of respect to I'm a prospect still, kind of. Or I'm just an innocent person who likes the style. You know, mm-hmm. don't you dare fucking wear red unless you've kicked somebody's teeth out. That's like what I'm telling okay. you right now, what that means. Like, I've learned that just through people I know have gone, been, you know, been inside and you know, from Hollywood. You well, know, here's the funny thing. I used, okay, well, nonetheless, I didn't know all this yeah, yeah. technicality. Oh, of it. Neither did I back then. But I used to. I wore suspenders too. I'd, I would walk around. With like the suspenders down, you know, kind of like you know, you wear your wallet chain. Well, you yeah. have the suspenders down too right. on both sides. I'd wear one suspender up sometimes down. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I never me even and, seen me that. Me and Adam Mocket, you know, Adam Mocket. Oh, yeah. Like, obviously, neither of us are skinheads back then, especially. Like, I mean, I don't know about what people used to think I was when I would shave my head and wear a white beater. I used to get that shit all the time. I used to hate that shit. People call me a skinhead, but Adam, you know, Adam. Yeah. He ain't fucking... Yeah. He ain't, but, like, that's one of the things is, like, uh, he used to like to rock suspenders, and he didn't really know, and fucking... He wore red ones before and shit like that, too, and we would go to the mall, too, and sometimes shit, people would, like, say things, you know? Like, I used to... For God's sake, when I was in middle school, I used to go to Magic Mountain, okay, which... I don't know now if it's really fucking like it was back then in the early mid mid 90s where it was a like gangbang capital and there were stabbings every day there and even shooting sometimes and shit where I'm from West Tor- we're from West Torrance I'm from West Torrance and the fact that I played sports every sport you can imagine and played on all-star teams and represented my city on sports so we would get uniforms and hats that displayed things like dub T you know what I'm saying? And I used to go rocking my hats as a kid, proud of, to be an all-star, and get hit up. Where are you from, homie? What's Dub T from the fucking, the Vatos and shit? Where are you from, homie? What's Dub T? And I, I swear, even back then, my response was, I'm a sixth grader. What's Doris Little League? I, I would be like, <laughs> I'm a sixth grader. I'm a seventh grader. This is my baseball hat i'm an all-star you know like and they would still what up homie east side low side west side north side phoenix you know like what you're from phoenix bro we're in fucking la here get off me and i hate that shit dude oh i hate that shit bro i hate uh, that shit i think that should be like legal terms just fucking kill somebody well you know as i've gotten well i guess it is right i don't know street street legal and as i got older you know especially going into high school and, and post high school that type of shit got me in so many fucking fights. You know what's you know, funny? Dumb shit like that, dude. I've fought so many fucking idiots that thought they were tough guys, you know, like, because... It's funny to see a 40-year-old man gangbang. <laughs> I saw that not too long That's ago. That's kind of rare, though, too, because when you get to 40, you know, you're like an OG, and you're yeah. respected, but at the same time, you got a family, you know? You've been through it. You've been through the bullshit You've been shot at. You've been stabbed. You've served time in the pen. You're like, no, to the point where, like, nah, I'm, I don't want to do this shit anymore. You know? I saw a 40 year old recently who was like, where are you from? Not to me, but to somebody else. Like, where yeah, are you from, Holmes? Happened, where yeah. are you from? And I'm just like looking, like, are you kidding me, dude? Like, dude, you look like if someone fucking hits you too hard, you'd fucking have a stroke. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> just fucking calm the fuck down. What is this guy doing trying to act? I mean, I don't know. I just don't get it. Like, to me, that's like some 15 to 18 year old shit. You it, know? Well, it, it is. And it also depends where you come from, too. At the same time, it depends where you come from. You know, like yeah. when you're in West Torrance, it is some fucking stupid little kid shit, like where you realize, and when you're going through high school, and then you go to places like Compton and Watts for parties. Or just passing through and you go to a fucking restaurant or a liquor store there and all of a sudden you're wearing the wrong colors and clothings and you get fucking surrounded <laughs> by four motherfucking gangbangers and you're like... What's up with Pat? Like, hey, let's go to Compton and chill, dude. That's where... I don't know. I think <laughs> I that's like, like he's got friends there or something. I'm like, hey, how about we go to Redonda Beach? That's why he told <laughs> me that too. And like, I would have actually went, but I wasn't trying to drive there because if I would have been there, I'd been getting shit canned. Cause I know all they do is drink fucking liquor down there too. They don't, 
you know, I drink beer. You know, I, whatever you want to call it, I'm an alcoholic. Call it what you <laughs> want it. No, I'm just playing. Cue, cue the exhibit I'm just, music. I'm just pa- yeah, exactly. I'm just playing, but I drink beer for a reason. Because fucking, A, I'm driving all the time, and I can drink as many beers as I want. B, fucking, when I start drinking liquor, I'm a different person. And a lot of people are different. We're all different people. <laughs> yeah, right? It's your inner and demon so, coming out. It is, it is so your inner demon. But, you know, like, I, I, I couldn't... I couldn't go drive down there, but especially too. I was trying to get people to like drive me or at least drive with me, you know, down there. And it had nothing to do with it being in Compton. It had to be that Compton is fucking a little, not too far, but it's pretty far. And I know the way they party. I know the way I party. And I know the way I haven't seen those people in a long time. That they'd be shoving shots down my throat and it would be a good, good fucking time. But then it would get to a point where, fuck, I got to drive home. And, hey, cops don't like seeing white boys driving around Compton because they think I'm looking for crack. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, like, I don't know. I like to sleep in my own bed, dude. I can't I, sleep that, on yeah. the floor. I'm not, like I'm not a DJ fade. I can't just sleep no, I can't do that anywhere either. you want. <laughs> I can't do that either. I never was one for that. And it started with being a young, because I have sleeping issues. I'm an insomniac. I've been one since a little kid. What do you mean by sleeping issues, though, exactly? I, um... There's a there's a sleep disorder. I don't. I mean, I, it's insomnia. But there's like this certain sleep disorder where, um, if you go get a study done or whatever, okay, and you sit in a room and it's bedtime. It's bed normal bedtime for everyone. You've been up or you know it's not like you woke up at six p.m. and they're trying you're trying to go to bed at ten p.m. Now it's you know regular hours and you, it's time to go to bed, and they shut the lights out and turn the TV off and you're in a room that's silent. You know, and it's like most people in that situation, it's average for America, Americans, maybe just every human in general. But it's in a situation like that, the average is 15 minutes. You should be conked out and going to bed. Now, for my father, okay, is the opposite of me in the sense my dad gets put in a situation like that. He will conk out in like two minutes or something like that, which is crazy. They like think that. Maybe he's a, has a little bit of um, uh, um, what's the fuck narcolepsy? Name? Narcolepsy, yeah, a little narcolepsy in him because he could he could conk sitting up, he could be sitting up conk out if he wants, you know, like, and that's four minutes, two to four minutes. That's crazy. Fifteen minutes is average. A lot of people take twenty minutes, you know. Me, I can't sleep like that. I need like there's something the way I was raised, something about my family, something about my genes. My mother's kind of similar. Um, I need noise. I cannot sleep in silence. I can sleep in darkness, but I cannot sleep in silence. And it's because my brain, the way my brain functions, I cannot, like, meditate and shut it down. Like, if you were to put, like, um, plugs in my head, you know, the, like, you're, you're, like uh, medical shit, and they, if you were going to get to do a sleep study, and they read my brain scan when I try to go to sleep at that time, my brain would be red. Which means that my brain is firing off signals all the time. And a normal person's brain will be fucking, like, uh, green or something like that. And, like, with a little bit of red spots here and there. Mine will just be red. I can't shut my fucking brain off. I can't. I need something like either a radio or a television. I need to close my eyes and listen and focus on listening to that shit. What do you normally put on when you go to sleep? Uh, like, well, for me, I put on, like, sports uh, talk radio shows and stuff, you know. So like, like on like not on the like not on the TV then right? Oh TV yeah like Mike and Mike. In Doesn't the, the light and glaring bug you? Sometimes it it kind of does but it doesn't you know like it, it doesn't. Uh, but like if I'm really fucking tired and it's time to go and I want to pass out, that's the one thing that might prevent me is the light and that's I get to the point where I'm so tired. Boom! I can shut the TV off and pass out. You know like. But um, so you have to be fully exhausted, like to the point where you can barely keep your yeah, eyes open. Yeah, I got, I got issues, dude. And like, this stems from me being a little kid, five, six, seven years old. I could never just go to bed. I couldn't go to sleep. I needed that shit to help me go to bed. And my mom has very similar issues. My dad is the opposite. But uh, yeah, that's uh, sleep. My sleep disorder is ridiculous. You know, what we should try, dude. I've been wanting to do this for years, and I've been telling uh, a Rod. Who, he never made it to the final uh, cut of a of a podcast, but he was on a trial version. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I was telling him that uh, 
I want to do a flotation tank. And do you know what that is? Have you heard uh, of it? I think so. It's basically, uh, they have these places, like the one I know, like the nearest one I can think of was in Burbank. And uh, I forget the name of it. I think like, Michael it's, Jackson had one. It's like Soothing Solutions or some yeah. fucking gay name. But anyways, you go to these places and it's kind of like if you went to like a, like a tanning salon, like some little area like that. Yes. You go into this little place and basically they have these like, it's like a casket almost, but it's like got salt water with like, I forget what kind of salt they put in it, but some sort of salt water where your body floats. Then you close the fucking thing on top of you and it's completely fucking black, pitch black. It's like a hydro chamber or something. Some I sort of, yeah, of that. hydro chamber type thing. Where you can't see, you can't hear anything outside, and you don't even, after a while, you can't even feel your own body anymore because you're floating in water. Right. So, supposedly, after X amount of time, your 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 mind starts to, like, detach from your body, and you just start having, like, vis- like vivid, like, hallucinations and shit. And supposedly, it's supposed to give you some sort of, like, uh, humbling experience where you just, like, it's almost like a, a legal way to do mushrooms in a way. Oh, so you hallucinate? You hallucinate, like you see shit, because your mind starts like having an imagination. It's like, like a oh. dream. It's, I mean, kind of. While you're awake, though, like yeah, you're awake, and it's like your body knows, like it's just so dark, and it's, though, it's and, like just imagine like pitch black, yeah. with no sound, like I mean, no sound at all. Right. Except, like if you went in like a sound booth where it's like it's so weird, you can hear your heartbeat. Well, I get you. Like, yeah. Just crazy fucking silence, like you can't see anything, and then like you're floating, so you can't even feel your body anymore. Because if you're laying, if you're laying like in something, like your body, like okay, my back's resting against this. You know, but if you're floating in water, and then eventually your body gets used to being wet, and then you just eventually just your mind loses focus of being attached to your body, and that's when the fucking visions come to you. <laughs> so I mean, I've been wanting to do this for years. It's kind of pricey though. I think it's probably like it's probably like seventy five bucks or something for like an hour. So I've been wanting to do this shit, and I've just been meaning to get around to it, but I just keep fucking not doing it. <laughs> but wow. uh, I know Adam or uh, A Rod, as I said, wants to do this shit. So if you're down, I think that might be interesting. I mean, just to see I what know, can happen. Maybe, yeah. Just That's seems like it'd be an interesting crazy. experience, you know. But uh. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no, yep, I uh, yep, I'm a fucking maniac. I can't sleep. I think it's because you've been having too much cracker jacked, dude. Well, that's what I like. I was saying that's like some people try to tell me that shit. Like, oh, fucking, they know who I am and what I do and shit. And it's like, no. Nah, I've had it since when I was the most innocent motherfucking kid you can ever imagine, you know? And actually, the shit that I do... But you weren't, eat, you weren't eating we'll Cracker smoking Jack? Weed, we'll say smoking weed, you know? Like, that shit actually helped me. That's one of the reasons why I love that type of shit. It helped me relax. Smoking weed puts me on another stratosphere. Okay, dude, let's, get, let's make a song, dude. Let's do a movie. Let's do it all at the same time. I don't... I mean, maybe because Sativa's... Sometimes it does. You know, say so it's at the beginning of it. Yeah, it will. It makes me fucking up and thinkity. And sometimes, if I'm in a real bad state of mind, if I got a lot of stress or I got a lot of bad things going on in my life at the time, smoking herb is really not a good thing for me um, because I you smoke. Dwell on it. And then I think about all the bullshit, and I fucking that sometimes it's hard for me. But um, eventually, I start. You know, I start coming down and I start like for everybody it's gonna make them fucking dead tired you know and uh it's one of the things that actually really helps a lot so I I mean I don't know you're nowhere near how you used to be right as far as like the smoking status oh not anymore no I the only time I do do it is to go to bed wow that's you don't you don't even just enjoy a nice high when you're not very rarely but I drive so much nowadays and I'm always driving you know I have my girl and and different uh, just situations where back in the day I, w- I was kind of chauffeured around a lot, you know, and I, or I was in trouble with the law a lot to where I, didn't, <laughs> I couldn't drive. So uh, nowadays I just drive so much. I, I hate driving stoned. Would you feel safer driving after having like 10 shots of booze where you're like... 10 well, shots? Well, I don't know about that. What's up, officer? How, no. Or, or stoned. No. What, what, would be, what would you rather do? I guess I'm not, trying to ask. not ten shot. I wouldn't want to be blackout drunk. I mean, I'd not, rather be stoned. Well, not, not, let me not, not, let me let me rephrase it. Not like blackout drunk to the point where you're like slurring your words though, and you're having a good time. You're still down to party, but you're slurring your words a little bit. If they actually get out of the car, you might stumble a little bit, but you can still hold okay, your own. If I'm dealing with cops, I would rather be stoned. 
What if there's no cops on the road? If I could just get home from point A to point B, I'd rather be drunk. Yeah. But, like, because I could do it. The, only, the difference is, is that um, when I'm dealing with a cop, it's a lot easier for them to fuck with me and persecute me and take me in yeah. when I'm on alcohol. Whereas herb, it's way harder for them. Why, you know? why don't you want to drive when you're stoned? I, I don't know, dude. It's like a... It's a paranoia. It's, but it's you never weird. had it before, right? No, I didn't. I stopped smoking for like three months uh, recently, and I regret it so much for the whole fact that I love smoking. I, lo- I need it in my life, in a sense, for certain things. You know, it is a medical, it is definitely m- medically, like, medically fucking. I'm looking for the word medically like needed. I need it for certain things. It does help me, but um, I don't know. There's just this weird thing that when I uh, when I drive like fresh off being fucking just getting blown and shit like that, my my like left and right perceptions are a little different. I'm more just like agitated, whereas you would think it would be opposite. Like I'd be more like loose and like chill, but it's not. I don't know. It's well, like, I wouldn't want to drive right after hitting the bull. Yeah. But let's say I smoked. Let's say I smoked, and then uh, I don't know, hour and a half later. Oh yeah, I can do that. I think I'll be fine. I'm talking about like you know, there's people I've done it my whole life. I used to do it a lot more too, but like we go like um, see, this is more related to like when I was in high school and when I couldn't be <clears throat> comfortable in my own house doing whatever the fuck I wanted. But like where we would go for hot box sessions and drive out, you know, around the fucking neighborhood. Park somewhere, smoke a fat blunt. I never liked doing that. And then, I love doing that. If I'm not driving, you know what I'm saying. Oh yeah, if you're not driving, who cares? <laughs> but that, and that's the whole reason. Like nowadays, I'm always driving everywhere. So when I'm at somebody's house and shit like that, and like people are smoking and shit like that, I don't just I don't do it anymore. I do it when I get home and stuff because I know I gotta drive here in a sec or I gotta drive pretty soon. And um, that's just what it came down to. It like my. My three-month break fucked my whole entire tolerance up, and, uh, you know, I've, the only time I even really smoke now is, A, because I, I need it sometimes to go to bed, I like to do it to go to bed, and B, because I get so fucked up from it now, like, and I try to, I try to smoke more, like, I, I want to build my, I like, go, uh, I want to smoke as much as possible now, so I want to get my tolerance back up to where it used to be, but I just can't. I can't do it. I can't get it back to normal. And it's just, again, too, I got a lot of shit on my mind these days. I'm really stressed out. I got fucking just so much bullshit I'm dealing with. You know, thank God a lot of that has ended real recently, you know. But, um, I don't know. It's just, it's different now. And I'm actually bummed about it, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, I just, <clears throat> I think, uh, if there's a lot of stress on your mind, it can definitely escalate that. But I think one of the things about, one of the benefits that I think people don't really, really realize is that when you do smoke and you have that paranoia and those issues that are bothering you when you're sober, and they come to the... It's like, when you smoke, it kind of, like, comes to the forefront. Like, hey, remember me? I'm that mm-hmm. insecurity that you have a fucking problem with. Yeah. That you suppress with yeah. alcohol. That shit pops out like, <laughs> like the fucking swiggling, waveling... Fuck, what's that What's that stupid thing that, that fucking advertisers have that, like... I don't know. The fucking, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. The swiggle monster. Yeah, Woo! it blows out in the, hey, come the shop here. Yep. It's like that thing coming out. Like, hey, you know. <laughs> out of your head. Yeah, so I think even though that's like it sucks when that happens, after you deal with that, it's like, okay, that was a learning experience. I've My mind is telling me I need to change something. I need to fix something. This is bothering me because A, Y, I mean, A, B, and C, X, Y, and Z. I need to fucking figure out what's causing the issues here. And then, like, it's like... If you drink, you ignore it. You know, you, you leave it, you go away from it. If you get stoned or if you take mushrooms or whatever, it's like it brings to the forefront and it tells you, this is your problem. This is your issue. This yeah. is what you need to fucking focus on. This is why you got to fucking stop doing. This is what you need to start doing. So I think if you do that, if you do that kind of shit, then eventually it's like, you get after you get past that point of like paranoia and eventually it's like, okay, this is how I need to fucking fix it. This is how I need to fix it so I can enjoy my high again. So I can just have a good time and laugh at stupid shit. It's like yeah. first you gotta get rid of those those plagues that like harm you. <laughs> what are you doing? Here? Dude, I'm doing the pee pee dance right now. Oh okay. So I All was right. waiting for a good little moment <laughs> to go into okay. the James Trashy uh, 
one minute. Yeah, go ahead. All right. right. Yeah, so uh, (laughs) I was sitting here talking about, uh, you know, smoking marijuana and how how it affects you and whatnot. And then I noticed uh, Mike Checker here stands up and starts boxing, (laughs) shadow boxing here. At first I thought he was just playing around, but apparently he had to take a piss, as he just told you. So that's why I was asking, like, what the fuck are you doing right now? Do you fucking... I didn't know if he was, like, really feeling what I was saying and he was just, like, getting into it and just hearing the Rocky theme in his head and going all out. Or if he, as he just now told me, he had to take a piss. But um, I was mentioning Cracker Jacked earlier because uh, before we start these podcasts, we usually start topics about, you know, what is this? What, what do you want to talk about? You know, I got, like, five or six topics here. And then he'll show up. Hey, I got these topics. And one of the topics he brought up was, uh, you know, Cracker Jack is a you know i don't i don't know who the fuck makes it i guess it's, i don't know if it's cracker jack is the company or if it's some orville reckon revin bacher whatever how do you fucking say his name i can't even say that old man's fucking name but whatever anyways so cracker jack is made of those like that caramel flavored fucking piece of shit fucking popcorn that people eat i haven't had that shit since i was a kid but nonetheless these guys make that shit right well you know, with the inner drinks popping up, with fucking Monster, Rockstar, fucking uh, Nitrous, Nitro Into O, whatever the fuck it's called. Like, you know, this whole energy drink thing, energy drink phenomenon has like been popping up, with all these people wanting to make their own product of an energy drink. Well, I guess the makers of Cracker Jack want to jump on that bandwagon, because you know they're seeing the, all the profits, all the money being made. So, what they have been, what they have proposed, or what they have been working on. <laughs> Is uh, you know, instead of energy drink, energy food. So what they've been doing is been putting caffeine in food. And the whole idea of the concept is called Cracker Jacked instead of Cracker Jack. So Cracker Jacked being, you know, you take some Cracker Jacked and you're fucking all amped up because you had some of that caramel fucking taurine flavored fucking popcorn. And now you're all fucking energetic. And they think, okay, cool. You know, we found our niche in the fucking, uh, in the, you know, energy drink market. Only problem is, I guess, FDA is trying to regulate on them because, I guess, putting caffeine in food is different than a liquid. I don't know how it's exactly different. If Mike Checker was in the studio right this minute, I could exactly, perhaps, give you some more insight here. But nonetheless, we have Cracker Jacked that's now, um, in fact, you know, let me Google this shit because I know, like, you people are going to be, like, wondering, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Cracker Jacked. So I'm typing Cracker Jacked in here and, uh... <laughs> Okay, I typed into Google, and the first thing I come up with is a baby of a crack whore that is deformed. No, that's not the crack jacked I'm looking for, but... Okay, anyways. I gotta find... I don't know. Anyways, my checker was talking about this. Now I'm starting to think it's a whole entire fluke and a whole made-up story. But nonetheless, supposedly, if you put caffeine in food products, it's different than putting it in a liquid product, and that's why the FDA is trying to regulate on cracker jacked. In fact... I'm really kind of curious now who the fuck makes Cracker Jacks. So I'm going to type in Cracker Jacks on Google right now. I'm looking at the Wikipedia page. It says Cracker Jack is a U.S. brand of snack consisting of strong molasses flavored candy coated popcorn and peanuts. Went known for being packaged with a prize of normal value inside. You know what? What fucking prize did they ever have to even fucking gloat about that? What? A little sticker? Like, come on, dude. That's not a prize, dude. That's junk. It's junk with junk food. So, I mean, that, that's probably why they're the... You know, that's probably why they call it junk food, because you get junk with your food. You get, you get an engagement ring. <laughs> yeah, Depending you know. on how, what the girl means to you. I was trying to tell these people here what this whole Cracker Jack thing's about. You're saying that uh, if they have caffeine in their food, it's different than being in a liquid. Yeah. And the FDA is trying to regulate that. Yeah. Now, do you know, like... Why they're what the differences are by any chance? The um the things that I was reading about stems from I I guess um children and pregnant women and sensitive people I guess in society we're more aware of beverages being caffeinated and and the and the beverages that are caffeinated whereas food products aren't caffeinated so the things that are out right now are like jelly beans and something else and then now you got cracker jacks which are very wait so they have energy flavored jelly beans 
or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, oh. they're they're out right now. Yeah, and they um, they contain something like fifty milligrams of caffeine per bag. <laughs> I don't even know what that is compared to a cup of coffee or whatever, you know. And uh, what it is is what they're saying is that there's a FDA laws, okay, in place, and these jelly beans and something else. And these Cracker Jacks are kind of like brushing the law away. Like, eh, we know there's the law there, but we're going to do this anyways and wait and make money and wait until they come tell us to stop. And so, like, these type of food products are kind of things that kids eat a lot, okay? And so these kids who normally buy Cracker Jacks and Jelly Beans on the regular, you know, even though it's obviously going to be labeled caffeinated Cracker Jacks, they're, they're either A, not really going to know the difference, or B, they're going to go, oh, this is cool. I buy Cracker Jacks every day. I buy jelly beans every week. I want to try this new one. Cat, whoa, what is that? I want to try that. And it's more dangerous, whereas like Coca-Cola and coffee, okay, kids buy what I've already, no matter what, and and coffee kids don't like coffee generally you know what i'm saying like and it's just a more known thing and it's just so it's less... more appealing to kids what they're trying to say it, oh yeah i guess it's kind of like what i read in that people who are more sensitive to the caffeinated products are going to kind of be fooled by this and it's it's stupid it's so basically dumb. they're just still, they're worried about idiots <laughs> yeah and but like there's actually a law a law that is differentiated between beverages and food products as far as the caffeine you can put in it so, like, every food product and every actual beverage has to put in their ingredients, this has caffeine in it. But there's no law, I guess, now. No, it costs too much money. I can't do it. There's no law that has to say how much caffeine is in it. So, like, that's, like, a big thing, I guess. Like, I don't know. So, that's the little issue right now. Cracker Jacks are trying to make this new thing. And stemming, okay, the Cracker Jack incident is stemming from... The monster and five-hour energy lawsuits that are going on right now. Monster has been not proven, but allegedly contributed to five deaths and two heart attacks or something like that. Yeah, a lot of those dudes, dude, they're fucking... um... They're, like, drinking, like, six fucking rock stars in one night. And five-hour energy has been, again, not proven but alleged to have contributed to 13 deaths, okay? And so now the FDA is looking into this. How do they, how do they die? Like, through heart attacks or...? So so what it ha- what's happened is, is like, I, I drink this, you know, I we've discussed this, I drink this shit all the time. I, I go into work at uh, 6 in the morning. If I could get a 5-hour energy drink, and, like, I would, I would take it hours in the work. You know, when you go to work, you know, once you kind of wake up and take a shower... And go to work and shit like that you're kind of pumped and like not pumped but you're cool and then when it gets to like a couple hours in you start like oh my god why am i here you pop that five hour energy i swear to god that shit worked i loved it and um it's good for you but so what i've like read and what i've actually seen i've been looking into this because i really um I really, like, want to know what's going on with this shit because it's a big deal right now. So, anyways, there's actually actually doctors, like, talking about this stuff. And they're saying that just like every fucking thing else, beer, milk, water, food, caffeine, everything you do, moderation. You're fine. You could drink a rock star a day. You could drink a monster. You could drink a five-hour a day, okay? It's fine. You're going to be okay. Even if you're sensitive, it's okay. But it's the people... Who drink ten of them? Over and the people who, and you know what? You can't fucking scrutinize these people for that, True. right? You know what I'm saying? Because just like anything else in the world, you can't overdo it. So that's what it comes down to. I hate to cut this short because we're uh, actually I wanted to get into talking about this guy named Shoe Nice. I'll show it to you after the podcast, but yeah, um, maybe we'll talk about next podcast. Yeah, we got time, but um, we're Later. actually all out of time here. Yeah. So I want to thank Mike Checker. Always. For being a part of the Jimbo Trashy podcast. Always. This podcast is brought to you by Global Psychosis Entertainment. Elvis on Acid. Check it out on YouTube. And uh, we'll see you next time. Follow us on Twitter at Elvis on Acid. Uh, see you next time. See ya.
Later, bros.